ask you, Fatima, welcome to me time. And yes, thank you. We're going to talk about me time and the importance of me time, or I would say like the sort of spiritual take of me time, but I'm going to start from how I know you, okay, um, which has been years and years and years and years now. Yeah. Like years, yeah. and years and years and years. years. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you came to me through, uh, 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 my old therapist who we both adored and loved Beverly, and yeah. miss very much, uh, Beverly. Right. And yeah. I like, I feel like I don't, you, you're different. I don't know. There's something about you. Not only that, like, I always say like, oh God, my head, my headphones. I was like, <laughs> whenever anybody says anything about, I like, wait, tell me about Fatima. I'm like, I don't know how to describe Fatima other than like, she's the real deal. She makes you feel so connected to yourself when you speak to her. I feel like I like whenever you and I have, a, so a lot of me time, my me time is talking to yeah. you. Yeah. Honestly. yeah. Um, because, and I always say, I feel reset after like I could be all up in my head and, yeah. and I find sometimes that it's like less, I like, I want to, he I hesitate in saying psychic because right. I don't know why, why don't you, why don't you say <laughs> <laughs> what, okay. how you prefer to be uh, like refer? Cause I feel like you're a healer. You're you you're in such touch. You have all the channels open. You have a history in your life of being, I think in your family, yeah, uh, even a lineage here. So tell yeah. us about you, what you do. And we're going to also move into some very fun birthday things because it is tradition that I talk to Fatima on my birthday every yeah. year and throughout my birthday week. And we're also going to do fun cards and things at some point, but let's just yeah. like Fatima, Fatima hey. tell the listeners, tell the listeners about you. Um, okay. So I'm Fatima. Um, I'm, I'm an intuitive mystic guide. What is that even? Um, basically what I do is I, I help you get back to who you were before you went through anything, right? Mm -hmm. Knock the dust off your soul. Um, I help people find like, what is your authentic alignment so that you can, you know, live the life that you want from the most fulfilling way possible. Now, can we call it psychic because am I psychic? Well, yeah, but I don't, most of us healers and readers and psychics, we don't like that word because when you start thinking psychic, it's like, oh, tell me when I'm going to get married, how many babies mm -hmm. I'm going to have, you know, all of these things that are actually at this point kind of campy, right? <laughs> like, um, and so what I do, I work in the energy for the highest good of a person. So whether that is going to be here are the predictions or whether it is about let's talk about yesterday or 10 years ago or your relationship, like nothing is off the table. What hair color should, should you have? Um, oh, yeah. It's all about the things that connect you to feeling like you are in flow so that you can live your life in the way that like your higher self and your soul meant you to do it while also like attaining healing and forward movement. Um, and I think if I was just going to make it really simple, it's in the conversational back and forth that I have with people. It's like, how do we enhance your journey? Because people tend to forget that like the journey is longer than the destination. And so many times when I start talking to people, and this is why me time as a whole is so important, is they just wanna get to the goal. When am I getting married? When am I gonna have that next job? When am I gonna be rich? And it's like, okay, but the goal is to like, think of yourself when you're an old person and like, you wanna look back when you're 80 and be like, I did life. I did this. I liked it. Not, oh, I should have spent more, more of this, more of that. I should have did this. So what mm -hmm. I help you to do is kind of like execute well in the most enjoyable fashion, whatever is your soul's purpose. That, wow. Does that make sense? Uh, does it make sense? That's like, it's, it's like, I couldn't, I could not sum it up like that, but I can honestly tell you from talking to you the years that I have now, like I, that is the truth. Like that is, I can't sum that up. That's why I always say like, it's not like you're going to meet a man in a gray suit on this day. Who's going to, it's not like, it's such bigger picture, like yes. so much bigger than that. And I yes. always feel like after we talk, I can describe it as like, I feel so connected to myself. Like it's, it, it yeah. Like I, I feel like I, rather than like getting up into like, 
when's this going to happen? And when's that going to happen? It's more like coming back to me because I think in some way too, you help enhance a person's own knowing mm -hmm. like within themselves and their own intuition that like, yes. it's, it's like coming back, you shake off all, because we got all the shit, right? We got all the, like, like, I'm going to go about my day and I've got a million things in my head, but that like at the end, but at the end of all of it, there's like a core to all of yeah. us that I feel like we get, you know, as you said, before anything happened to you, like but that life happens, trauma happens, all these things can happen. And it can kind of like, I wouldn't, I don't know that we ever like lose who we are, but just that like we get, there's like a cloud or like, I almost see like a spider web or like, yes. some, yeah, where you just yes. like, you like shake all that off. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And like, of course, too, because like the predictive aspect can be a part of it. But the thing is, yeah. it's just whatever's for a person's highest good. So in all the conversations, you know, like you and I have had, sometimes it is about like, hey, here's what's coming. But most of the time, it's about like, then now what needs to happen, maybe going over what has happened, you know, just whatever the universe kind of has to say to line you up for what's best for you, basically. <laughs> Uh, yeah. one of my most favorite things is over this last year. I mean, obviously Melanie is my, like, you know, we're like so, soulmate best. I know. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was so happy because, well, I, I feel like you're becoming like, like Hollywood's best kept secret in a lot of ways, just or like uh, the secret weapon or something, yeah, because like yeah. everybody's talking to you now, but I love this. I love that Melanie's just like, out th like this is such a perfect example because you're such a, an angel like you're such an angel to all of us you're such Thank a guy to all of it you are um but you're also real like you're also on the yeah. ground like it's not like yeah. I talk to you and I feel like I'm like like I can't connect on a human level because I've I've right. had that and talking to healers and stuff too um but Melanie I just saw a video you posted today actually of Melanie doing an interview with Katie Couric um talking about like this this, this is what it, this is what I think we're talking about. Like in a weird way, I think if, if you had like, when you told Melanie, you're about to like have a run in your forties that you would have only thought was possible in your twenties and yada, yada, whatever. But like, and, and then it turns around and it literally happened like beyond yeah. there's so much more to that story too that I know that like I'm not even going to share with everybody <laughs> yeah, yeah. About, like yeah. very very specific because I want to also say too like Fatima is you can be incredibly specific some way and sometimes that absolutely blows my my mind um ah. and, and one of them was when Melanie told the story of like the Critics Choice Awards and you were like mm, you need to go you need to make sure you're at those awards and she won the Critics' Choice Award. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Oh God, so, I got chills right. just now. Oh God, okay. See, and that's the other thing that I love about you because uh, ha like I'll say, oh my God, remember when you said that thing? You're like, no, I don't remember. Like you're so present in every session that like you might, you might, you know me well enough to like know what's happening in my life a lot of the time. But, it's, but one of the things I love is that it's never about like, I don't know, like, oh, let me pick up on this old piece of information that I remember. Like you literally are just present in whatever the, un the universe spirit channel, explain that. Okay. <laughs> so like, we're all connected to like, I'll just call it a major energy that what I just like refer to as the universe. So think of it as like this telephone line that it, a part of us is connected to all of us. Right. Yeah. And I work in highest good energy, which is like the light. Right. So it's, pretty much like one of the highest vibrations possible, um, which just makes it better for a person's highest good. And so what happens is when I go to connect, um, it's just with the intention of like, okay, for the highest good, um, spirit, whether you want to call it like God energy or the universe, or it's kind of just universal, like whatever it is that resonates with you. What I will just say is it's an energy that is connected to everything for everyone's highest good. That's what I connect to. And um, I think that sometimes we can get caught in, oh, what about my guides? And then the angels? And then what is mm -hmm. God? And what is this? And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, if you just tag everything, let me tune in for my highest good. The universe will just pop it right into whatever it needs to be. So you never have to worry about, am I saying the exact right thing? You know, right. just set the intention um, because the universe will come right in like, oh, highest good is for you here you go. Like, yeah. That. One of yeah. my favorite things I do now with that 
intention wise is candles. Like I always feel like, so let's talk about the candles because you have a store in New Orleans now called Path Awakenings that is just you're, oh, Fatima's in New Orleans. I should say this uh, just for yeah. anybody. Like that's why we're on Zoom. Anyway, you should set an appointment with her, awakenwithfatima.com. But you. you have a beautiful store. So I kind of, what the significance around the candles for me is like, there's something about that repetitive, you know, they talk about manifestation and intention and all of that. And there's something about like, whether it's seeing the candle burning, revisiting the intention, kind of like, oh, like I used to do vision boards, I guess, maybe along those lines, like, what is the significance of the candles? Um, because you now have a, a whole line of intention candles that yeah. also go align with your, along with your deck, which we're going to talk about your, your Oracle deck. Yes. That's what you yes. Yeah. Not That's tarot. Is, yeah. Not. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But intention to talk about, I want to talk about candles because I feel like candles are so magical and, uh, so and I want to talk about the use of them with setting intentions and, and why, why candles? Okay. So candles, like anything, it causes you as a being a tangible thing mm-hmm. to focus your energy, take a moment in your me time, pay attention and set your intention. And so a spell, a prayer, a wish, it's the same thing (laughs) because it's taking the time to, here's what I want. Here's how I want it to feel. Here's what I'm envisioning. So why I love candles is that it gives you the excuse to take the moment with yourself, to just think about, ask for, wish, pray for, make a spell, whatever, for what you want to bring in. And it doesn't have to be crazy, spooky, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) It's like literally whether you write a bath and body works candle, or it's a church candle, or it's one of my intention candles. When you take the time to put energy into something and feel it, you are ordering from the menu of the universe. And I think it's so important, whether it's a candle or writing of a list or doing that together, that you take the time 30 seconds, 30 minutes, whatever it is to what do I want? Mm -hmm. What do I want to bring into my flow? What do I want to attract? What do I want to go into? So with candles, it's nice. It's easy. And every time you look at it, it's like, there's my intention. It puts you right back into the energy of what you want to bring in. And I find that a lot of times when we use candles, it's not like, oh, I hope this happens. It's so like, oh, it's coming. I've done this. It's coming. So the act of being with the candle, lighting it, putting it there, it's like, yep, I asked for that. So the same way when you go to a restaurant and you're like, oh, I ordered pizza. So you're just sitting there now waiting for the pizza, knowing it's coming. To me, when you like things like candles and do that, it's like, oh, it's coming. It's a matter of time because like you've set that intention. Oh, I love that. One of the things you have worked with me that I feel like has been like worked with me on that has been really helpful is getting out of like thinking and into feeling. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of times, even with setting the intention of like, I don't know what the next job is or looks like, I know what I want it to feel like. And so, yes. (laughs) So that's one of the things I love when I look at the candle, because it takes me, it takes me to the feeling, uh, rather than the exact words, although being specific, I also think is, is, is really helpful. I've had that happen a couple of times with you as well, but I, I love the idea of like looking at something and being like, ah, I'm, I'm in that, I'm staying in that feeling, which I think is like, I don't know all these laws and rules or whatever, but there is the law of attraction that I, yeah, yeah, that I do feel like works, works in that as well when you're attracting that, when you're in the feeling, you're attracting that feeling. It's sort of like, and so it is. And so it is. I agree with you 100%. And like, basically the formula for like manifestation is, okay, you do want to kind of think about like what you would like things to be, but then you want to envision it while you're feeling it, right? It's about the potency of thinking, envisioning it, feel it, let it go. Just under the assumption it is coming. Right. And then you can be free to go live life, have your trust and allow things to show up as necessary, because let's assume you've also done your part. 
right? I was, so, I was just going to say the follow-up <laughs> question to that, that I know the answer to because you and I know each yeah. other, but to, that other people may not is, all right. So, okay. So I set my intention. Yep. And what I just like can take a nap and not do anything for like, I can just, I can go on vacation for a week and not worry about it. Cause it's happening. <laughs> I mean, so speak to that. <laughs> so, okay. So it's like this, right. Um, I, it, sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, you know, I want a new job and it's like, cool. You want a job. Right. And it's like, so have you updated your resume? Do you know what you want to do? Have you looked on indeed? And, and no, the answer to all is no. Okay, but they want a candle. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, I want a candle. And it's like, okay, when people want to date, but like they don't want to like leave their house and stop watching Netflix and they don't right. want to go on a dating site. Okay. Right. So basically it's like this. When we come into a human body, the agreement is that there has to be the tangibility in our doing coupled with what is unseen, doing these things together, manifest things and attracts them in balance right? So the goal for your magic to be as potent as possible yeah. is have you done what you can do within your control and reason? Mm -hmm. Then you set it off all nice and beautiful before and or after with your candles, your whatever your uh, ritual is, mm -hmm. right? And now you've set yourself up perfectly to manifest what you want. Can things just pop out of the air with no effort? I mean, yeah, but like, that's not what we signed up for in our humanness. Mm -hmm. When we came here, we're like, oh no, we came to move more slow than our spirits actually can move. We came to like be in the experience of this hands-on thing. So it's funny when we as humans want to step out, like, I just want it. I've done enough. I'm over it. I don't want to do anything else. I just want it. But we literally came here to do. So right. it's learning the balance of let me be in the doing and enhancing what that feels like when I have to do it, right? Along with the faith, along with the metaphysical unseen. Does yeah, that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. I, love that. Yeah. I like I and I kind of know that just from from talking to you, like there's yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. thank you for speaking to that. Cause I know a lot oh, of people absolutely. have to like, you know, that book, the secret came out at some point that was just like, just set your intention and do nothing else. Do nothing and it's else. like, no, that's not how it goes. It's the momentum. It's the, as you said, everything in your power, then the unseen, then the whatever. And I'm such a believer in all of that. Anyway. The team is a religious experience for me. Uh, <laughs> I, love that. I love it. I love it. That's what I'm saying. All right, Fatima, let's talk. Uh, well, we can talk about me time in general. I also yeah. like, I want to talk about if you want to talk about your me time, but I also want to talk about, cause I'm selfish and it's my birthday week. Um, how, uh, <laughs> and why, I mean, I obviously talked to, to you about this podcast, uh, yes. a lot and how am I doing? How am I doing, Fatima? How's it doing? Yeah. I'm doing? I like it. So the thing is, I like the energy of the podcast. I feel like the purpose of it is to help people find all of the ways that me time is defined for them, right? Yeah. Um, and, and with less judgment, right? Because me time as a whole is what do you do that allows you to get back to your most authentic self in some kind of flow? right? Yes. Because life every day, there's something to do no matter what. And um, me time is getting back to you so that you can do the life that is you correctly, Thank whatever you. that means. I right? you talk about it. So well. I feel like I've had a hard time even defining it to people because to me, it's so major. It literally could yeah. be like, it could be the biggest thing, like something major and imp majorly impactful happens in your life. And it sets you off like Tisha's episode where it's like her whole year of yes. And her whole year of healing to the simplest little thing of like, I like to scroll and watch dog videos on that uh, on, on YouTube at the end of the yes. day. Yes. Yes. And the thing is that is true. And so your what you're doing is essentially allowing people to see the plethora of it can be a major thing it can be like oh i'm gonna go ahead and eat dessert for breakfast it doesn't matter it's like your me time the only thing anybody has to figure out is what are the things that i engage in and do that allow me to get back to me that let me feel like me in peace in flow and to to step into whatever clarity it is that i want for my next steps when i'm going in the world and it doesn't have to be um, like sometimes when people have projects or things that they're working on, they think that <clears throat> the way to get it done is 
hit it, hit it, hit it. Don't stop. It's not done. A thing that I've seen is people will work themselves as long as there's something to do without giving themselves the permission to have their me time to get back to them because they feel like it's irresponsible. They feel like it doesn't practically make sense, right? Like, oh, why would I take a nap and I need to clean my house or I need to write this play or whatever it is. But the truth is that me time it should energize you. It should help you keep on a present track of what is working for you and not, right? And the understanding is it, it might be a bubble bath. It might be a trip to Rome. It might be hitting d on on your phone for 30 minutes. It doesn't matter. But I find that what you're doing and what this is about is needed because people most times are looking for permission to do what they already are moved to do. Yeah. But in their mind, it's like, oh, but what they were taught, what society says, which is like, go, 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 go. Um, I think that's shifting a bit now. So if we integrate great me time as something that is as much of a necessity as eating breakfast or going to work, it will enhance the quality of one's life immensely. So whether it's painting, like you said, it can be horseback riding, or it can be something as simple as being in a dark room for five minutes. Like it doesn't matter, but it's taking enough time to recognize what affects your energy in an uplifting, positive flowing way. Whatever that is, is me time. Right. Thank you. Thank you for like, you're, you're, you're very good. So I, I, I try to describe it that way. And I look, I have, you know, sometimes one of my questions for people sometimes is like, when you hear the, when you hear the phrase me time, does it make you cringe or does it make you like for that reason that I feel like it's almost like this, it has maybe, maybe self-care just in general has taken on a little bit of a, not negative, but a little bit of an eye roll. Yeah. What is that? Why um, that happens? Well, okay. So in order to <laughs> okay. have balance, we go from like way left to way right. 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 So we're coming out and oh. I think COVID really helped with this. Right. Yeah. But like pre COVID it's like, more do what you're supposed to do, go to work, all of this stuff. And, you know, people, all of us, we become a little maybe resentful or or different things that aren't so shiny when we're just doing what we're supposed to do, right? right. So the response to that has been self-care. I'm self-caring. And I, I think that when people overdo it, like, oh, self-care is a spa day. Self-care is this, you know, self-care is saying no. Self-care is saying yes. Yes. Self-care is boundaries. Self-care is like the most practical, unshiny things. Real self-care is what you do every single day that lends to you being in your well-being, not just, oh, I've taken this moment of self-care. Those are needed too, but that's why people are eye-rolling because it's almost become an excuse of spa day, not dealing with stuff, when it's like actually self-care is to deal. That's such a good way to put it. And also, yeah, like I get a little like, like if I talk to somebody about me time or you talk about self-care and then, you know, people who are, I think there's like, I don't have the money for that. I don't have the time for that. That is a privilege. That is a blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's like, it's so much simpler. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get caught up in like, even I am not explaining it properly. That's why I'm like, Fatima's here to explain it. Uh, <laughs> in, in the most loving, like spiritual way, but also in like the real way of like what it actually means. I love that you just said could be setting boundaries, which is r- honestly really hard for me saying no is hard for me to do. Like those things are, but like, I, I am getting better at it, yes. but I, I also feel like I can be the queen of alone time. Like I do mm-hmm. feel like I spend, but I've also, I think you've helped me so much too, just in, in, I really enjoy my own company. Um, but I have to be living in a way that takes care of, like, I don't, when I'm, you know, this about me, if Mm -hmm. I am, uh, taking on another, like, uh, what would be the taking on another person's feelings is like my responsibility or not setting those boundaries or, you know, kind of knowing I need a minute kind of knowing I need time and then not taking it. One of the ways I describe it is like, you know, like the tank's been on empty, like far too long. Um, what would you like say? I love that I'm interviewing you about my podcast. 
<laughs> now you know my dynamic with Fatima, everyone. Um, <laughs> Fatima, tell me, tell me. Um, yes. But like to somebody who does say, uh, I, I don't have the, I don't have the money or the time for that, that that's like, you know, a, a privilege or I have kids and I don't have five minutes of the day to like take for myself or mm -hmm. I don't know. So here's what's interesting, right? Because I'm like, okay, if we're going to take all that focus on why it can't happen, let's breathe and take a moment and let's see what can happen. You know, you don't have money and you have kids. That's cool. But like step outside and breathe for five minutes because you probably need a moment where you just get to be you before you're a mom, a daughter, a wife, a girlfriend, like to just set up the moment where it can be just you, even if it's locking yourself in the bathroom, right? And <clears throat> if you're serious about trying to help and support yourself, get to a better space, then you have to commit to, I'm open to all of the ways that I can get there inch by inch. Mm. And a lot of times people won't do anything because they'll just think of the whole kit and caboodle. Well, that would be vacation and this and that and blah, blah, blah. So now they've set up something that is like almost impossible from the space they're in to even think that they can reach. And what I'm like is let's pull it back in. Okay, step outside for five minutes, put your phone on D&D, &D, like just very simple things little, that are within your things. grasp. Yeah. And then it creates a ripple effect because yeah. once you, like we can tell ourselves all day, I should do this. I should feel better. I should feel peace. And if that worked, then we would all be okay. Like just telling yourself doesn't work. It's the tangible experience that you allow your brain to have. So now it's become a reality. So if you're willing willingness is key. Like, okay, I can't maybe go to Hawaii right now, but I can like go down the street and just like sit at the park for a few minutes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If the you can, stay present, yeah. yes. Yeah. Staying present of how does this feel to me? If yeah. we tune into how things feel to us, then that's the, that's the shortest, uh, the, the shortcut to align the A to B. Yeah. 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 Like that. And so I'm going to tell everybody because I see this all the time, even like with my friends, scale it back, man. You know, you didn't necessarily come here to be an Avenger. So even if you know that you want to save the world, <laughs> if you're thinking about, I got to save the world tomorrow, but like you're stuck in your nine to five, you're going to really feel disempowered. So maybe just help the old lady across the street that like lives next door. Start oh. where you can. Please just start so you don't feel like you're stuck. Yeah. Because once you feel stuck, you get frustrated, you get snappy. And yep. then there's like this antenna of here's everything that makes me feel like that. Yeah. We didn't come here for that. We came here to be in flow. We came here to be an experience and not saying that it's just a cakewalk, but most of the time it can be much more enjoyable than what we allow it to be. That's the truth. That is the truth. I love Exactly what you just said about staying in the space, because I know myself, I can focus over and over and over again on, I mean, we've talked about this where I'm like, wait, but what happened to this? Where did this go? Why is this not happening? Blah, blah, blah. And then, and you'll always say, but look over here, like, look over here at what is happening. Look at the what. Mm -hmm. And then when I step into that, it's like more comes, more comes. It's sort of like that simple green light, red light thing of like, like in like going toward the green lights, but we like want to focus on that red light because yes. that, that like trumps all for whatever reason and our feelings, but, um, Oh, see, can you see why mm -hmm. I love talking oh. to this human? Thank like you. <laughs> you just are Fatima. Like it, this, everything you say is like, okay. You have the connection to spirit. You have the connection to, which is, 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 it's so huge and and hard for all of us to understand. But then I listen to you speak. You're also so practical. Yeah. This, this is so practical. This is yeah. so anybody can relate and anybody can do these these small steps just to just to shift. Just that little shift changes everything. Like that's it. Yeah. Um, yes. I want to talk about so many things with you, but I yeah. also like. <laughs> I'm going to ask you um, okay. <laughs> what you think we, so I want to do cards. 
I want to yes. talk about birthday week, but I also yeah. want to know if you want to share or feel it's necessary because this is Fatima's not Fatima's going to be here uh, a lot, but um, uh, your sort of origin story or discovery in, in this space, like of yourself, like how you came across this. Do you want to talk about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what? You are gonna be the first official story of how my like my official gifts blew wide open. Oh I'll, shit. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. So really? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean I kind of know some of it, but I like I am also now and now okay, I'm listening. Okay, I'm listening. I make popcorn. So- so I was even, I was born like this. Okay. Yeah. And I always knew like, I should be able to read cards and energy and stuff like that. Um, and so throughout life and like my parents and friends will even say it was kind of like, like a running joke because it's like, oh yeah. One of my friends was like, you're making things happen. Like she thought I was making things happen as mm-hmm. compared to like knowing they were going to happen. And then my other friend on the opposite side was like, oh, you're psychic. So my origin story is that I had a friend that I loved and who loved me very much. And it was confusing because it was that, um, it, let's call it a situation ship before situation ships were a thing. Okay. I was 19. <laughs> I was like 18 uh-huh. and I felt all of this and like, in, and they felt all of that, but we were young and immature and like acted a certain way, but didn't necessarily just talk about it and communicate, right? I learned a lot practically from the situation too. So I was like, you know, I know I'm not crazy. I'm going to talk to a psychic. <laughs> yeah, right? Wait, because I'm going to talk to a psychic. Okay, go on. Yeah, so because up until this point, like I just had all my information and stuff like that. I, I never thought like, let me talk to someone outside of myself, right? And I'm 19 or so. So here I go on a quest and I found all kinds of of people and things. And at this point in my life, I wasn't like officially doing readings, right? It was more unofficial. Yeah. So this, I ended up finding this woman who's like, bring your lover back, stop divorce kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure we've all seen them. They usually advertise a psychic with like a a hand or something like that. So I go and she tells me this whole story and is like, oh, yes, you love each other, but like something's going to happen. So you need to do this so it doesn't happen or you'll never be together. Like all this stuff, right? Very fear-based, very like, Hmm. I came out of that kind of like, oh my God, yes, there's love, but oh my God, I guess we'll never have it. And it just didn't sit right with me, you know? And I continued on my quest. And that's when I met, um my, I'll call it like my meditation teacher at that point, she read for me. And in the reading, she was like, oh, he looks like he's at the movies or something. Cause I see him looking up at a screen and this and that. And she straight up said, you can have this if you want it, but you'll have kids and you'll be divorced before you're 30. And my soul knew that that was absolutely true. I knew it because I couldn't put my hand exactly at that time on Oh, yes, this feels so right, but no. Mm, God. And Maggie, the next day, because because we were roommates, um, a movie ticket dropped out of his pocket. He was in the movies looking up at a screen at the time I had the reading that the woman told me he must be at the movies. Mm-mm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And okay. d- d- uh, it's crazy, right? But that spoke to me in... Uh-huh. Like, oh, here's a person who's like me. Uh huh. Ah, uh-huh. that here's a person who made it make sense and was in the ethers of something that sounded almost a little out there, mm-hmm. right? And then I got this confirmation, and then I ended up just joining the meditation group. Um, I, within mm-hmm. a few weeks, I didn't need the cards anymore, and uh, been been doing readings ever since. Um, it's just that when I was doing them, it was coupled with my corporate. So. What mm-hmm. I learned, though, is the importance that people come and they lay their power on the line with you. They come and they lay everything with you. And it's important that you get it right, that you're in integrity, um, and that you allow what the universe has for them to come through, not what you think should come through. Yeah. And, yeah. and so my origin story is I was my clients. Yeah. 
So you went on my... both sides. But see, and you know what I love about that story? So you're talking about the specificity of the movie theater and all that. And what I hear is she said something that you knew to be true. And that I think is what happens when we talk. And I like I will say, like, you know, I I can't put my finger on it. But something, blah, blah, and you'll be like, yeah, this is why. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's what you just said, kids divorced by this certain time, but there is something in it that you, I'll be like, that's it. It's this thing. And I like, when you say like, oh, I know, I know that's true. And it's like, somebody hits that with you. Like, I, I mean, look, the, 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 the movie theater part, look, we've had a couple of moments like that. Yes. Yeah. We've had a couple of moments like that where you were like, yes ask that question one more time. And I'm like, no, I've asked this question 30 times. You're like, ask it one more time. Trust me. And then I'm like, holy shit, Fatima, I asked the question <laughs> one more time. <laughs> and the answer, like, I actually got the correct answer. That's such a, uh, that's such a, a cryptic, vague, but trust, it was like, a, a, it changed a whole, a whole dynamic of a relationship that I, I knew. I wouldn't have uh, said to you, I asked the question 30 times already. If I didn't, I knew that the answer was, I was getting the wrong answer until I got the right answer there. And, and that person even said, I told myself, if you asked me one more time, I'd tell you the truth. That's what I'm saying. All right. So, okay. So basically yeah. you were on both sides and, yes. but you also have, I believe in within your family, right? Isn't there a yes. history of, right. And I love both sides. Like, yeah, both sides. Both sides. Um, here's what's crazy. So knowing things and feeling things is so normal. My parents didn't really go out of their way to be like, here's what's going on on all sides. Right. But as I found my own way and shared with them what I was doing, it was kind of like, oh, of course you're doing that. And then I find out about, here's what my grandfather does. Here's what my cousins do. Here's what... Right my parents do so right. it is something that is just in the bloodline like on which i think is cool on both sides right yeah. um and and especially because like my dad is from senegal west africa and my mom is from curacao the dutch west indies so we've got two different sides of the world these people that just met like in college in chicago <laughs> and, wow. and um then they made me and my, my mom is Catholic and my dad is Muslim. And then here's me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just the universe. Yeah. And they're cool with that. So um, I appreciate it. And yeah. one thing that I just would say to anybody is like, look, support your children in being whoever they are without having to attach titles to it. Mm. The issue with most adults is that they're either living their life trying to be the person and adult they were told they should be, yeah. or they're busy rebelling against it because they figured out it's not their truth. Mm. So what I would say to people who like have little ones is allow your little one to feel accepted as they are and just guide Yeah, because we are who we are as we come in to this world. Right. And the more comfortable and accepting you are of you being you, the more it allows your gifts to shine, the more it allows you to like live your life in authenticity. And it even will give you like, uh, like a larger pool where it makes sense to have me time because you're taught to always go back to you. So even though I know this is kind of like not in what we're talking about, um, we all end up having to play the role of the adult that we needed, that we didn't have. Yeah. some time in our life when we yeah. start healing. Yeah. And so I would just say to anybody, like if you have a kid or anyone that you love, try to create as much space as possible to support them and who they are and that it's okay that they feel that way. And it's okay that they think that way. And it's okay. Let them understand that they are okay. Mm. That's one thing I think I love too, that we like, even with the horseback riding with the painting and stuff I've discovered in my own me time, even traveling alone, even mm -hmm. going to eat at a restaurant alone. Like I did last night to kick off my last week of being 42. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was just like, I want a meal. I want a good meal. I want a piece of fish. I'm going to go, but it's like playtime. It's like yes. that child you're talking about, like, we never lose that. Like, I think we never. all within us. Yeah. And I love you. I mean, you've always encouraged that um, with me. I mean, I honestly think one of the reasons I paint, which I don't even share that often because it's, it's it really is my playtime. I mean, I think I should or will or whatever, but yes. like, it's all about kind of finding those things that like we, 
well, I'll say it's all about for, for me anyway. And, and again, describing that to people, it's like, well, what's your playtime? What's your me time? I'm so happy you're here to, 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 to tell the listeners what, <laughs> what <me time. laughs> but, um, but I love what you just said too about expression and authenticity. Um, because that's the, that's that like alignment we, I think we get away from, um, or can get away yes. from in, in time. Um, Fatima. Yeah. Um, I just want to like ask you questions now, but I also, um, how do you spend your me time? Cause I would imagine in your space, you're, you're in, you're up in everybody energy all the time. Like, how do you, how do you protect yourself from that? And also reset yourself, uh, when, when you're, I'm just curious what your me time. Oh my God. So I love and feel best by water. And so luckily, um, like I have a million ways to do me time. Probably one of my most consistent is I'll go by like the lake near where I live. Sometimes I'll even do my client sessions there. I've talked to you while I'm there and I'll just be looking at the water while I'm working, or I'll just go on my own and just sit and breathe by the water. Um, I love to travel too. So like the newness of like going to different environments, um, sometimes practically you have so much going on, you can't just up and go all the time, you know, right. But like, um, me time is travel. Uh, also too, part of my me time. Um, I recently just started this, uh, transcendental meditation. Oh yeah. Uh, like I decided to coin that as things have gotten crazier. I'm like, you know what? I can dedicate 20 minutes twice a day. I'm still working on that um, consistently. Um, but I like it because it's a gift to myself. So for me, me time is when I'm coining things that are just for me because of me, just for me, that make me feel the way that I want. Um, sometimes sleeping in will be my me time. Um, and also, you know what? Saying no. (laughs) You know, you said this earlier, like speak to that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I absolutely love people as a whole. Right. And, um, I, in, in natural nature, it's like, oh yes, like we can do it. You want this, we can do that. Like, you know, I like to say yes, genuinely, because it's like, I like, why not? I think almost anything's possible. So what I realized though, is I was like, you know, let me feel alignment because I was getting a little inundated, like even personally with people just wanting to be in my energy in certain ways and overlapping with business. And so then all of a sudden I looked up and it's like, there's always something. What is the difference between regular life and work life? It's all here. So I started saying no. I started saying no to like lunches with friends that were technically Mm. business. Recently, I told a friend of mine, we have to have a keyword so that when you want me to go into channeling, which is like work, we can have the boundary that it's like dragonfly. Oh, I'm technically working right now Mm. versus, oh, we're hanging and spending all this girl time. But really now I feel like I'm working for two hours because you want to. So saying no to the same old way. Uh, just because I can do it, I should do it. You know, yeah. um, it no really led to freedom. Actually, it is for it. I have a very hard time saying no, but when I do, especially when it lines up with kind of what you're saying, of like, no, I ha- you have to set a boundary around. I would imagine that, like, I mean, all of us, like, with you can, whether it's texting you or. Or again, if I was in the same city, like that difference between like, oh, like I'm going to lunch with you, but also this podcast, for example, (laughs) you know, this is, we're in it. Like this is a, which thank you so much for doing, by the way, you could have said no, no, I know. But I mean, in general, like I get, I kind of, there is an empower, uh, I don't know if empowered is the right word. It's just like a a love self-care that goes with saying like, uh, no, I can, I can do this, but I can't do that. I can do half of that. I can't do all of that. You right. know, just one thing I want to add on to that, because it's not comfortable. Like it's not always comfortable saying no to people you love. It's not always comfortable. Right. Like if you like to say yes too. but here's the deal. When you set a boundary, it's because you want to enhance the relationship. You want yeah. to keep the relationship. And a lot of times we'll identify like, oh, I'm not doing what a person wants and we'll attach a story to it. Like, right. okay, they're going to feel unloved or like, like, I don't care or, or, or they may really feel like that. But the truth is, if you always go back to why you're doing what you're doing, 
it makes it easier when the intention is right. The why. So if your intention is like, I love you so much, but now I'm not able to enjoy you because I feel like the boundaries are bad. So my intention is let me say these things that I need and explain to you if I feel moved so that you can understand I'm doing this because I love you and value you. And I actually would like more of you, but it has to be under circumstances that are best for both of us. A lot of times people just key on, oh, I'm going to say something they don't like. And then it becomes this whole thing. Key in on the why. Why are you doing what you're doing? I'm doing this because I want to continue with you. I'm doing this because I love you and I want this to work. Exactly. I think you just like bail if you don't see that or want it to work when setting boundaries. I like I've even said that to I said that to someone recently where I was like, I'm actually saying these things because I I want you in my life versus right. like, yeah, totally. Right. Yeah. Me time. So me time is important because of that. Cause when you take your me time and you're just with you, you get a chance to assess where you really are with everything so you can handle it most appropriately. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're us. All right. <laughs> it's Seema. Yeah. All right, yes. so my, bir- my birthday. Well, it's your my birthday, birthday is tomorrow when this airs. Okay. This is earlier in the week. So I want to do I want to do some energy. Well, you're so good. So Fatima has been doing this thing called Words with Fatima. If you don't follow her, you should follow her because she's is it once a week now? Yeah, it's once a week. Typically yeah. we drop it on Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, drop it on Wednesday. It's always it's always just lands. Like I, I encourage everyone just to like, take a little, it's just leaves you in the best space. You as you thinking about things in a certain way. And I would say most people could be like, Oh my God, I, that is what's happening. Like sometimes Fatima will say like, you know, uh, it's just crazy right now. Like shit is crazy right now. And here's the best way to take care of yourself or protect yourself. Or here's, you know, here's what it, here's what the intention is, or with this like energy going forward. Anyway, I encourage everybody to listen. Awaken with Fatima. Is that the best place? That's right. That's the best place. Awaken. We drop it on Awaken with Fatima and Path of Awakenings. But Awaken, but both are called Path of Awakenings. Yes. Right. Right. Let me get that right. So the store is called Path of Awakenings. She has candles and cards and crystals and beautiful, just beautiful things, uh, you know, with with all the right intentions set as well. So yeah, check check that out too. Um, But so Fatima created a deck uh, that's so beautiful that I love. And I do these cards all the time. Yeah. I love the butterfly. And now I want to be selfish and have a little of my own me time going into my birthday. And I want to see what, I want to see what you get and what comes up for, um, should we do the year? It's like six to eight months, Spirit said. We're going to like, so what I'm going to do, I'm like, I'm just, I'm going to pull three from the deck and then um, it's going to talk about that. And we're going to see what comes up for you. Okay. So the first thing, ha, do you see that awakening? Yeah. I like that. Love that. I love that card. New beginning. One of my favorites. Oh my God. It just totally, I'm totally like Fatima fangirling right now. I'm so excited. (laughs) I know all these cards so well. So I like, uh, uh, oh, this is a card I want to talk about. I get this a lot. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we're so doing three? Let's, okay. Yeah, we're doing three. So let's just talk about the interpretation of it overall. And then we can talk about the individual again. cards as you want. Okay. 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 So like in the awakening for you, even though we're talking about the next six, eight months to come, this actually has been an ongoing thing. So it's kind of solidifying how you are awakening into yourself, spirit said. So the way that I see it in my mind's eye you're Mm -hmm. growing more into yourself. It's not like you're becoming a different person. It's like the realization, the acceptance, the inspiration, the excitement of all things that are you in a way that is empowering in Mm -hmm. a way where there is acceptance. And also like, you're enjoying it. Like, "Mm, that's me. Like, yeah, more of that to come. And what I like about that energy for you is that in you emanating that, that's what's going to get answered back to you in that. So one thing I want to say then too, because spirit was just kind of talking. So you should be open to like all opportunities because there's going to be different ways for you to be in the world um, that lend to abundance. This has to do with working things and the ways that you're doing different things and putting energy into different things and offered that actually bring you like monetary abundance. Mm -hmm. Um, It's, it's, 
different things. So expect to have multiple things going on, um, multiple opportunities, and, and you're just supposed to open, say yes, and like awaken to that, mm-hmm. right? Um, because I feel like it's always been there, but it took some healing and some opening and, and the willingness and now the acceptance where I feel like you'll be in more celebration than you've ever been, okay? Mm-hmm. About the different ways that you're able to do all kinds of things. Okay. Thank you. I kind of yeah. feel that. I feel like in such an unknown place right now of like, mm-hmm. like I've never been here before and I like it. Yeah. I mean, these are really good cards, especially like, so taking an awakening with like new beginnings because a person's awakening sometimes, I mean, it could last a decade with no fruit and that can be rough, but in your case, it's not that. Um, this, I love that card. You know, people love this card and I had actually thought they're like, it's a cemetery. That's creepy. Why? But um, here's the thing. This is an actual space in New Orleans, the Lafayette Cemetery. They actually, um, I didn't know this. I was just like exploring when I first got here and I was like, I feel so peaceful here. I could hang out in the cemetery, right? And later on, years later, that's... um, also where they filmed Interview with the Vampire and some other stuff in that cemetery, right? So it just has its own kind of fancy energy just because, but how spirit said it was, so many times people think of a cemetery or or in all of this is like death and this, but where things end, they also begin. So in this particular card, it's like the new beginning because there was also an ending of something, but with it comes transformation, which is why they're the butterflies. So for you, your new beginning has already started, but you're still like in the middle of the beginning of it. Okay. Okay. And so the question that you're supposed to kind of ask yourself is what do I want? Like, what do I want to feel? Which we talked about this earlier in the podcast, right? You know, I think that your problem, and I'm going to go even over to the next 12 months is going to be having to choose because there's just one you, right? Mm -hmm. Having to choose where you're putting yourself and what you want to do, because it looks like a buffet of interesting, fun, like things Mm -hmm. as compared to one or two choices and like, which one? Um, So you're definitely going to have to like, measure yourself in regards to, okay, I'm going to have to put some of this stuff for like next week or next month, because in your new beginnings, it's, it's a lot of enjoyment and it's about the integration of the living day to day coupled with like also how you're making your money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Coupled with like, um, like you feeling like who you are in working and who you are, it's like, it's, it's the same, but different sides they get to come out instead of what I think was like um, a box maybe before, right? Where it's like, okay, I am this, I'm, this is my daily, this is my work, this is that. The box is now blown open. There's no more box. The world is your oyster. And wherever you can allow yourself to feel comfortable in the many faces of Maggie is what your new beginning is about. Okay. Does that make sense? Bring it. Okay. I mean, I, I, I love all of that. And I kind of know what it means. Okay. Let's talk about duality. <laughs> so the duality, Why laughing? I, I'm laughing because like, it's so appropriate. It's so appropriate because for you specifically, right. It's, it's okay to wear 12 hats authentically and they're all you and it, there is no <laughs> supposed to. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's you're supposed to just be everything it is that you are. This is about you stepping into and living in more of the acceptance of the multitude of Maggie. And so whether you're like, I want to dance and I want to sing. Also, I want to teach people how to do whatever, right? Um, what's going to come up for you over the next six to eight months are the opportunities to wear all of the hats that you have the ability to do. And what you're supposed to do is pay attention to what resonates most with you. What do you love doing the most? What inspires you the most, Mm -hmm. right? And when you get into that energy, you become a walking billboard, right? Just by being you, that when other people see or connect with your energy, it gives them permission on a soul level to go do the same thing too. Oh, I love that. And, you know, because one of the things that your soul wants to do is it is here to help and like shine light. But I think a thing where you may never have just like sat on like, what do I do to just help people, right? Even though you know you want to help is 
it's not about one particular thing for you. It's about how you show up in all things authentically, right? And that energy just gives people permission to do whatever their version of that is. So the more that you are in the acceptance and the flowing and allowing of Maggie, right? Mm -hmm. The more you're kind of sharing that fairy dust with everyone. Oh, I love And that. so when people say they want to change the world, heal the world, world peace, you start with you. And so please, I'm going to recommend, you know, write down a bit of your journey over the next six to eight months, because I have a feeling there's going to come a point where you're sharing that like in an official way. And when you look back at like the certain points of how you felt on a day or what you did, it's going to be very relatable to others because I really don't think anybody's looking for something more different than the next. Everything that everyone wants is because they think it's going to make themselves feel the way they want to feel. Mm. So whether someone thinks they want to be president or whether it's like, I want to, you know, win an Emmy or whatever it is, I want the boyfriend, the girlfriend, you want it because you're assuming it's going to make you feel a certain way. So mm. we can just go to the core of it do the things that you have control over to make you feel a certain way right. instead of waiting on the hope shot. What I like about the energy in these cards is these yeah. are the doing, these are the moving cards, yeah. the being. So yeah. for you, you're already in the journey. And the more that you choose to open up your arms and embrace that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, I'll just tell you, I feel like there's an increase uh, financially too, when we go over to the next 12 months in comparison to maybe 12 to the previous 12 to 18 months, mm -hmm. because you're going to be uncovering um, these kind of pathways. Some are already in the works where it's coming. So I, I, I would say it's a good spread. Good. good. I, love <laughs> spread. I love it. What else should we do? Is there anything else I specifically want to ask Fatima that would be really funny for Fatima? What do you think? Is there anything we didn't cover? Cause I'm just going to have you back. Do you want to do birthday wishes? Oh, I have wishes. Let's see. Oh I mean, I don't know. I feel so private about my birthday wishes, but I think, you, yeah, it's in Fatima. But how about this? Right. So the best way for you to be spending your like birthday, I'm going to say birthdays this year because it's multiple things, right? Yes. Um, you're going to do probably a minimum of three different things, right? So what is the intention, set a wish and intention for each of the three different things that you do? Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. It, it, it's like, okay, if you're doing an intimate dinner with friends, right, mm -hmm. then your intention behind it and your wish would be like, you know what, more unconditional accepting love, whether platonic or romantic or both, let that grow and let this, you know, particular celebration for this part of my birthday, sow the seeds for that. Okay. Mm. So you have that. Then let's say you do something else where you're like, okay, my, my second thing, I'm going to go buy a piece of art or I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. This one is I'm sowing the seeds for abundance going forward. And you let everything you choose to do in whatever you're doing for that mm. be about blessing yourself with the seeds of abundance going forward. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing, um, oh, it's interesting because one of the things you may do might be like a little trip outside. Yes. Of where you are. Yeah. Um, and so this one is, well, you know, I do my Malibu almost every birthday. That's like a and thing. I might even do something bigger than that, but I'll probably still, I'll probably still do my little Malibu me time. Yeah. You can do that. I think there's something that might be a little further. It felt a little further than that, even okay. if you still do that, but on this one, then it's also here's what I'm releasing and letting go with love. Mm. And it's interesting how it is attached to when you're going outside of your regular environment, right? Because like the thing with candles that I always suggest, like when people are doing them, I'm like, okay, once it's done, throw it outside of your home. That's like letting go, letting God, letting go, letting the universe. So when you're thinking of that, it's like, here are all the things that I'm blessing. But when we talk about letting go, it's like, thank you, it's the final act of thank you for all of these things that have been. And it, uh, what spirit showed me is, you know, that little thing when we were kids, it's like this little plant and you pull it up and then you blow it and make yeah, a Yeah, the wish. dandelion. Yeah. Dandelions. Okay, duh, Fatima, dandelions. No. <laughs> that trip is your dandelion. Oh, I love that. I, I love that because 
So I have this ritual. I do pretty much. I I don't think I've ever missed a sunset the night before my birthday because okay. I like to kind of like say night night and thank you to whatever lessons or whatever the year brought or whatever. And this year has flown by, and yes. it's been a ride. Like yes, it's just been yeah. So I'm also feel a little like. I, what's weird is that I feel like I'm, I'm a bit more present now than I've been in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I feel, I feel like, I don't want to say time slowing down a little bit, but I do find that when you almost go like minute to minute, like I'm sort of in a yes space of like, is this a yes or a no? Is this a yes or a no? Uh, mm-hmm. That time just naturally has a way of kind of like adjusting to sort of where yes. I feel like I feel a little bit like. I don't know. I already feel more present going into this birthday than I think I have really felt all year. There's something weird that's happened, like with the move. There's something weird that's happened with, you know, being out of a relationship, being, you know, kind of looking ahead, you know, looking at being 43 and where I am now and how I feel almost younger now than I did 10 years ago. Yes. Which is weird. And anyway, but I love that. I love the trip. I love that trip intention. Anyway, you know, I, you know, I talk to you all day. Um, anyway, I love you. And I love you too, Maggie. Thank you. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about this episode? Do you feel good? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I hope that whoever hears it gets to be like, oh, more me time, right? It not only is for oh. the podcast, but, but also like, I hope that your podcast gets to be recognized as here's the thing that gave me clarity for something I could do for myself. I hope that when Mm. people say me time, that the energy of it gives them a little pop, like, Ooh, like on a hot day, when you think of maybe a popsicle, it's like, Ooh, refreshing. I hope that that is the energy that me time gets to carry and be a bit of like a, like a beacon of light for, for people. Well, thank you, Fatima. That's how I feel about you. So what I hope people take away from the episode is um, like, I think people can be scared or confused maybe about talking to people that they might hear something bad or that they might like healers in general or something. Yeah. And I hope that people take away from this, that there's like, especially, I think, I I mean, especially with you, you specifically um, that uh, call Fatima. That's what you should take away. Ah! call me call yeah. me or come see me yeah uh, see uh yeah. get a candle to pra- practice just what it feels like to be kind of in this in the space of that but anyway I love you so much Fatima thank you so so much I hope you thank have you. the most beautiful day I think you have a kind of a big day after this or a yeah. fun day after this. yes yes and I want you to enjoy it 